Welcome back everyone to the Income Stacker. Today I'm gonna to talk about unlocking your retirement with a self-directed IRA. Today I'm gonna to restrict myself to the self-directed IRA, but there are other ways to unlock your retirement with things like solo 401k, also known as individual 401ks, but we'll talk about that in another video. Today we're gonna to focus on self-directed IRAs. What are they? What can you do in an, a self-directed IRA? What are the rules and uh, regulations around it? And that type of thing. Uh, really just a summary of what you can and can't do and uh, you know the power of a self-directed IRA. So exactly what is a self-directed IRA? A lot of times you'll see SDIRA, by the way, that stands for self-directed IRA. And there's really no legal distinction between a self-directed IRA and other IRAs, except that the self-directed IRA really allows you the broadest possible spectrum of investment choices. So what does that mean? So typically you open an IRA and they say it's self-directed, but it's really not. You can only buy you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, that type of thing. However, in a true self-directed IRA, you can invest in other things like real estate, notes, private lending, uh, you can invest in other companies and so on. So we'll talk about that in a second. So really the big difference is a self-directed IRA, again, allows you to buy things outside the traditional stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Self-directed IRAs have been around since the IRA was established in 1974. So you'll talk to a lot of people who go and say, hey, I talked to my CPA and you never heard of that. Well, that's because the CPA is not uh, really up on IRAs, you know? A lot of times they're just um, doing their thing, being a CPA. But self-directed IRAs have been around for a long time. They're getting obviously a lot more popular now because people want to do what? They want to control their wealth themselves. Um, you know, put money in the stock market, good luck, right? Might go up, might go down, but do you have any control? None. So everything I buy, I have control over. I buy it at the right price. I make sure I have the right loan to value. I make sure I have cash flow. I make sure I'm secured, I'm collateralized. That is not the case in the stock market. Nothing against the stock market, but um, I don't think you should have all your eggs in one basket, and this is a way to uh, diversify. So when set up correctly, or when using a proper self-directed IRA custodian, now there's two different ways you can do this, with a custodian account, or there's what we call checkbook IRAs as well. And again, like I said, the solo 401k accounts is, a, is another way to go around it. But just sticking with the IRA, you can have a custodian do it for you, or you can set up a checkbook IRA where you have total control. But in either case, <clears throat> excuse me, you're allowed to invest not only in stocks and bonds, but again, also in real estate, notes, private placements, tax lien certificates, and much more. And I'm going to show you a whole list in a second. The potential benefits of a self-directed IRA is that you are able to invest your tax advantage retirement dollars and investments, this is the key, that you know and understand. I understand real estate, I understand notes, I understand you know, rental properties, I understand private lending, all that good stuff. Um, you know, I understand the stock market, but I don't really control the stock market. So I think it's better to invest in what you know and understand. I'm gonna um, tell you a little story about a fellow who invented, invented, I'm sorry, invested in a vodka distillery and made four times on his money within a short period of time. So a self-directed IRA, um, they've been around, like I said, be, uh, around for a while. Be assured that self-directed IRAs are allowed under the IRS rules as long as you follow the rules, right? They're the same rules for a self-directed IRA as a regular IRA. There's prohibited investments and there's prohibited transactions. Now, I'm not going to go through all the rules today, but I'm going to give you a highlight of the big, the big ones, you know, the ones that typically will catch people. So let's talk about the prohibited investments first. One, you can't invest in collectibles such as antiques, cars, art, rugs, stuff like that, right? Stuff you shouldn't invest in anyways because you know what? They usually go down in value. So unless you're really lucky and you bought the Mona Lisa or something, you're probably going to lose money. But either way, you can't invest in these types of assets. 
Also, you can't invest in life insurance in an IRA. 401k, a little different, but we're talking about IRAs. You can't invest in life insurance. So that's that's pretty much it. That's it. So everything else is possible. So there is a lot more uh, ability to invest in things like real estate, you know, notes, private lending, these types of things in a self-directed IRA. As long as you stay away from these things here, you're good to go. Now, prohibited transactions is something different. So here are a list. Again, this is not comprehensive, but it's uh, a big top five list of prohibited transactions. One, selling a property to an IRA you already own. It's called self-dealing. You can't do that. So what does that mean? Let's say you own a property free and clear and you want to, uh, let's say, um, get money out of that property and you go to the bank and they won't lend you money. So you're like, well, I have money in my IRA. I'll buy the property in my IRA and then I'll get the money in my hand and now my IRA owns the property. I have my money. Everything's good. You can't do that, right? So you have to be very careful about that. I get this question all the time, even within the family members. Again, I'm not going to go into super detail here, but you have to watch out in, in terms of who you deal with in terms of your family members. Second, buying property for personal use. So you can't go out and buy a property in the Bahamas and vacation in a couple months a year and then uh, rent it the rest of the time. You can't do that. Now you could rent the property and then eventually distribute it to yourself and then use it at that point in time. But in the meantime, you have to rent it the whole time. You can't use it for your personal use until you distribute it to yourself after you retire. Also, borrowing money from an IRA. You can't borrow money from an IRA unlike a 401k, right? 401ks, you can typically uh, take out 50% of the balance or up to $50,000, I believe. So that's the other thing you can't do. You can't also use IRAs collateral or security for a loan. And the big one is no personal guarantee. So for example, let's say you want to buy a house that's worth, again, the make the numbers easy. We'll say it's $200,000 house and you want to buy that house, but you only have 100,000 in your IRA. So a lot of times you could take 100,000 from your IRA, you could get a $100,000 loan, combine the two and buy the house. Most people don't know that you can do that. However, the loan you get, you can't personally sign for. It has to be what's called a non-recourse note. Um, if not, then you kind of blew up your IRA. So stay away from that. Make sure you understand the rules. So those are just some of the prohibited transactions to think about when using IRAs. So what can you invest in? I'm going to run over these pretty quick and kind of wrap up, but just to give you some ideas and get you thinking about all the great possibilities in a self-directed IRA and things you might understand and like and enjoy investing in like single family houses, apartments, real estate, um, raw land, tax liens, tax deeds, mortgages, notes, uh, private equity, precious metals. You can invest in commodities, right? Uh, all these things you can do inside of your IRA. Uh, also, you can invest in currency. You can do currency trading, um, uh, LLCs. You can invest in an LLC or C Corp. And this is the, the story I was gonna tell you about a fellow who um, basically had $300,000 in his IRA. He self-directed it into a certain account and then uh, he invested that money in his friend's uh, vodka distillery and he had a pretty big stake in that distillery. A few years later, it was worth, that 300 was worth $1.2 million because the shares had gone up so much. So it's a great way to you know, take your money and invest in things that you want to and things that you believe in or you have experience in. Uh, Car paper is another one, commercial paper. Again, the list goes on and on. I'm just trying to give you some ideas here. Uh, private placements, equipment leasing, factoring, structured settlements. And yes, you can still invest in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds in a self-directed IRA as well. So you have the gamut of choices to invest in. There's really no limit except uh, the ones I showed you at the beginning with the collectibles and the uh, insurance. So that kind of is a summary of self-directed IRAs. If you want more information on this, um, 
uh, sign up at IncomeStacker.com or shoot me an email. And of course, as always, sign up for our YouTube videos. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.